LinkedIn, Mercy Otis Warren. Mercy Otis Warren's lineage traces back to the early settlers aboard the Mayflower, and her marriage to James, who also hailed from Mayflower stock, united two of Massachusetts' most esteemed families. Despite the prevailing norms of the 18th century that limited women's access to formal education, Mercy's father permitted her to partake in the tutoring sessions intended for her brothers. This unconventional opportunity paved the way for a remarkable journey. While her siblings pursued formal education at Harvard College, Mercy harnessed the knowledge she gained from these clandestine lessons to channel her thoughts into writing. She penned poetry, pamphlets, and plays, all under a pseudonym, a common practice among women of her era who aspired to literary recognition. In all her published works, Mercy passionately championed the cause of American independence. Her words effervescently portrayed the protests in Boston that erupted in response to the Stamp Act of 1765, and she vehemently opposed the British occupation of the city at that time. Her correspondence with male revolutionary leaders showcased her prowess as a writer and thinker, ultimately persuading them to embrace many of her pro-independence ideologies. Her influence extended beyond the Revolutionary War era, as she maintained regular correspondence with several founding fathers during the preparations for the Constitutional Convention. When the initial version of the Constitution was submitted without a Bill of Rights, Mercy was undeterred in her conviction that such a safeguard was essential. She took to publishing pamphlets, ardently arguing that the document should only be adopted with a Bill of Rights attached. Her unwavering stance on this matter alone solidifies her status among the pantheon of American legends. Following the adoption of the Constitution in its current form, Mercy went on to write one of the earliest and most comprehensive histories of the American Revolution. A prolific writer throughout her life, Mercy Otis Warren's remarkable body of work played a pivotal role in shaping public opinion and consciousness during the formative days of America's founding. Her legacy as a persuasive writer and advocate for liberty endures as an integral part of our nation's history. 9. Mary Norris Dickinson John Dickinson, a prominent member of the Constitutional Convention delegation, displayed unwavering conviction during the pivotal year of 1776. While his fellow delegates advocated signing the Declaration of Independence, he stood his ground, guided by a profound concern. His refusal stemmed from a sincere belief that the rights outlined in the document might incite violence against fellow citizens, a stance firmly grounded in his Quaker faith. John's wife, Mary Norris Dickinson, a staunch Quaker herself, played a pivotal role in shaping his position. She ardently upheld the Quaker principles of nonviolence and gender equality promoted by the Society of Friends. Mary's determination led her to encourage John to advocate for revisions to the Constitution before its official publication. Her significance in society, as a substantial landowner and possessor of one of North America's largest private libraries, gave weight to her concerns. Mary was far from passive in her pursuit of change. Throughout the Constitutional Convention, she actively engaged in political discourse, frequently hosting dinners for delegates. These gatherings ignited impassioned discussions, attracting other women to the political sphere. Her influence extended beyond her home, where she leveraged her position in high society to champion causes close to her heart, a bill of rights, gender equality under the law, and women's voting rights. Some conservative voices balked at her involvement, challenging the tradition of women stepping aside from post-dinner discussions. However, Mary remained steadfast in her resolve. Despite British forces burning down some of her estates during the Revolution, Mary's library survived. In 1784, both Mary and John generously donated land and their treasured library to Benjamin Rush, who established a groundbreaking institution in their honor, John and Mary's College, now known as Dickinson College. Mary's legacy endures as a trailblazer for equal rights activism during a time when such advocacy was far from common. 8. Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton Elizabeth Eliza Schuyler hailed from two of New York's most influential families, the Schuylers and the Van Rensselaers. It was amidst the Continental Army encampments of New Jersey in 1780 that fate brought her face to face with her future husband, Alexander Hamilton, then serving as a dedicated staff member to the great George Washington. 
in a whirlwind of destiny, the two exchanged vows that very year, in the opulent Schuyler Mansion in Albany. Eliza, as Hamilton's newfound partner, left an indelible mark on the genesis of the Constitution and the nascent federal government. She stood by his side, helping craft his influential contributions to the Federalist Papers during the pivotal debates surrounding the Constitution's ratification. Yet, Eliza's journey was far from a seamless one. She grappled with personal adversities, enduring the heartache of a miscarriage and the painful revelation of her husband's affair, leading to a brief separation. Nevertheless, they ultimately reconciled. As George Washington penned his farewell address, it was Hamilton's hand that guided the quill. Eliza, however, secretly played a monumental role in shaping that masterpiece, a truth hidden from scholars for nearly two centuries. In the wake of the tragic duels that claimed her son and husband, Eliza emerged as a co-founder of the Orphan Asylum Society in New York. For over four decades, she devoted herself wholeheartedly to the cause, tirelessly raising funds, gathering essential supplies, and overseeing the nurturing and education of over 700 orphaned and abandoned children. Today, this noble institution continues to thrive under the name Graham Wyndham. Eliza's dedication extended beyond nurturing young lives. She ardently worked to restore her husband's legacy and safeguard his writings and personal records. Thanks to her unwavering commitment, history now enjoys a richer understanding of Alexander Hamilton's life, career, and convictions. Outliving her husband by half a century, Eliza's own journey came to a close in 1854 when she was laid to rest beside Alexander in the Trinity Church graveyard in New York. Her tireless efforts and contributions during the formative years of the United States, particularly her benevolent work for the orphaned and forsaken, played a pivotal role in shaping the nation into what we know today. 7. Abigail Adams Abigail Adams stands as an extraordinary beacon of intelligence and literary prowess. Her ink flowed like a river of change, as she penned letters that implored the Founding Fathers to embrace independence, democratic principles, and the cause of women's rights. Her words etched in history reveal a resolute spirit. What set her apart was her ability to wield the power of communication effectively, reaching the influential men of her era. Notably, her letter to the Continental Congress chastised the all-male assembly for neglecting women's interests, embodying her unwavering commitment to gender equality. Fearless and unyielding, Abigail never hesitated to voice her convictions. Even during her sojourn in Paris alongside her husband, John Adams, during the Revolutionary War, her letters bore witness to her disdain for the patriarchal practices of the French court. At the court of St. James, where she was presented to the king, she did not hold back her critiques of male-dominated British society. Remarkably, during the Constitutional Convention, Abigail succeeded in persuading her husband to champion women's rights and secure their equitable treatment. Beyond her political influence, Abigail carved her legacy as the first First Lady to reside in the nascent White House in 1800. In its early days, the White House was barren, cold, and devoid of any landscaping. Legend has it that she once used the incomplete East Room for her laundry. However, she swiftly transformed it into a paragon of style and taste, captivating future visitors with her remarkable design sensibilities. She, more than any other First Lady, elevated the White House into a revered and cherished institution, a sentiment many Americans continue to hold dear today. Abigail's influence among the founders, despite her husband's initial reluctance, was profound. Her impact echoed through the annals of American politics, with even Harry Truman, in the middle of the 20th century, opining that she might have been a superior president to her husband. Her persuasive and impressive opinions endure as a testament to her political acumen and steadfast commitment to democratic ideals, women's rights, and social justice. 6. Mary Catherine Goddard Mary Catherine Goddard a trailblazing figure in both journalism and postal services during the American Revolution, was born in 1738 near New London, Connecticut, and grew up there. In 1762, her path led her to Providence, Rhode Island, where she joined her brother William in establishing the Providence Gazette. This newspaper played a crucial role in supporting the early endeavors of American patriots and became a resounding success. In fact, 
It was so prosperous that William went on to establish another newspaper, the Maryland Journal, in Baltimore. In 1774, when William departed for Philadelphia to launch yet another newspaper, Mary stepped into his shoes, becoming one of the world's earliest female publishers. The following year, she assumed the role of postmaster in Baltimore, solidifying her status as one of the first women to hold a federal position in the United States. During the early stages of the Revolutionary War, Goddard's newspaper staunchly supported the Patriot cause. In a historic moment in 1777, when the Continental Congress decided to publish the Declaration of Independence, Goddard generously offered her press to produce the Goddard Broadside. Notably, this was the first published version to include all the names of the signatories in typeset, and she proudly included her own name in the lower corner. In 1784, William forced her out of her position at the Maryland Journal. Nevertheless, she continued to serve as Baltimore's postmaster until 1789, when Postmaster General Samuel Osgood questioned a woman's ability to handle the role. Despite numerous petitions from the citizens of Baltimore advocating for her reinstatement, her request was denied. Mary Catherine Goddard's unwavering dedication to journalism and public service in a male-dominated field is a testament to her resilience. She even managed a thriving bookshop in Baltimore until her passing in 1816. Her legacy as a pioneering woman in journalism and federal government work endures to this day, leaving an indelible mark on both industries and the history of Baltimore itself. 5. Martha Washington Martha Washington, a woman of wealth and stature, embarked on a remarkable journey when she joined her life with that of George Washington. Her dowry, a testament to her prosperous past through her marriage to Daniel Park Custis, included vast lands. In 1759, the union between Martha and George blossomed, and they reveled in happiness for 14 glorious years until a heart-wrenching tragedy struck, the loss of their beloved daughter, Martha, to a sudden seizure. Throughout George's extensive command of the Continental Army, Martha demonstrated unwavering support. She made arduous journeys from their Mount Vernon home to be by his side in the encampments whenever possible, offering solace and aid to the troops. Moreover, she extended her generosity to fellow officers' wives, exemplifying her remarkable character. When George assumed the mantle of the U.S. presidency, Martha stood steadfastly beside him. Her most notable role was that of the gracious hostess at weekly presidential gallows, pivotal gatherings attended by foreign dignitaries, administration members, and influential figures. Despite lacking an official title or defined duties, Martha Washington effectively forged the path of the First Lady. This achievement was no small feat, as she navigated uncharted territory without any established guidelines. Her innate qualities of elegance, kindness, and professionalism naturally positioned her as a leader. Martha earned the respect and admiration of all as a beloved lady and an exceptional event hostess. While at times she may have felt constrained by the demands of her role and the obligation to provide weekly entertainment, her dedication remained unwavering. Some former revolutionaries even drew parallels between her gatherings and the despised royal courts of Europe, a testament to her elevated status. Ultimately, Martha successfully transitioned away from high society, departing Philadelphia with George in 1797, returning to Mount Vernon. There, she continued to carry out her political and official responsibilities with the same grace and dignity that had defined her throughout her life. Even after George's passing in 1799, Martha Washington remained a shining embodiment of the best America had to offer. 4. Dolly Madison Dolly Madison's legacy is an enduring testament to her remarkable contributions to both her nation and the esteemed role she played during her husband's presidency. Her journey as a White House hostess commenced during Thomas Jefferson's administration when the widowed president, in a moment of wisdom, invited her to lead a grand gala. Under her guidance, the executive mansion transformed into the very heart of early Washington's high society. Remarkably, this tradition she pioneered still thrives today. Beyond her social grace, Dolly Madison also played a pivotal role in adorning the White House. Collaborating closely with architect Benjamin Latrobe, she ensured the mansion was adorned with the utmost elegance. 
her influence extended to the shaping of the social hierarchy at state dinners and official functions. She skillfully utilized these gatherings to stimulate political discourse and forge compromises. So impactful were her endeavors that she earned the unique distinction of being the only first lady to hold an honorary seat in the House of Representatives. Dolly Madison redefined the role of the first lady with unparalleled vigor. She wholeheartedly championed her husband James's political vision and principles. Even after his passing and the sale of the Montpelier plantation to settle debts, Dolly remained an iconic figure in high society until her passing at the age of 81. Her final resting place is in Washington, though her remains were later exhumed and reinterred at Montpelier alongside her beloved husband. While Dolly Madison is often remembered for her role as a White House hostess, her contributions to early American society extended far beyond. She was a masterful diplomat and a fervent advocate for her husband's political career. Her influence not only shaped the social and political fabric of the United States during its nascent years, but also left an indelible mark on how future First Ladies approached their duties, a legacy that continues to influence the role today. 3. Esther de Burt Reed In the early days of America's fight for independence, the Continental Army confronted a slew of formidable challenges, including a crippling shortage of funds and vital support. In response to this dire need, a remarkable figure emerged from the shadows, Esther de Burt Reed. As a British-born woman and the wife of a prominent Philadelphia attorney, she defied convention and forged a path towards change. In the year 1780, Esther founded the Ladies' Association of Philadelphia, a beacon of hope in the tumultuous sea of uncertainty. Their singular mission, to muster resources and funds for the beleaguered Continental troops, who languished in unpaid agony, crying out for supplies to sustain their fight for freedom. Astonishingly, while Congress struggled to secure the essential finances, the Ladies' Association thrived. Yet, even in the face of their unprecedented success, George Washington hesitated to entrust these critical funds directly to the troops. His apprehension stemmed from the fear that the funds might be squandered on alcohol. Esther, however, possessed a determination that knew no bounds. She penned a compelling letter to Washington, laying the foundation for a close and unbreakable alliance. The fruits of their collaboration were nothing short of miraculous. The funds meticulously gathered by the Ladies' Association were meticulously allocated to procure clothing and essential supplies for the troops. The Association's indomitable women transformed mere materials into garments of hope, each stitch a testament to their unwavering commitment, with their names forever etched into the seams. Over time, the diligent hands of 39 women from the Philadelphia Ladies' Association sewed more than 2,000 shirts. These simple acts of dedication quite literally clothed and empowered the colony's troops in their darkest hour. Tragically, despite her tireless efforts, de Burt Reed did not live to witness the triumphant culmination of her mission. She succumbed to dysentery in Philadelphia later that year. Nevertheless, her legacy shines as a radiant testament to the valor and unwavering spirit of American women during the Revolutionary War. Esther, alongside countless other women, displayed selflessness beyond measure to offer the vital support the Continental troops so desperately needed. The noble deeds were pivotal in securing victory for the American forces and ushering in a new era of freedom and independence. 2. Lucy Flecker Knox Henry Knox, a shrewd Boston bookseller in the pre-revolutionary era, masterfully concealed his true allegiance while selling books to British officers. Behind his facade of loyalty to the king, he cunningly gathered priceless intelligence on the British Army's artillery strategies. Moreover, he embarked on a daring romance with the enchanting Lucy Flucker, a prominent belle in Boston, defying her affluent family's stern disapproval. Against all odds, they united in matrimony in 1774. Yet, when Henry's patriot heart was laid bare, Lucy's family disowned her without hesitation. Throughout the tumultuous years of the Revolutionary War, Henry rose to prominence as the Continental Army's chief of artillery. In the shadows, Lucy fervently backed him by orchestrating supply lines and providing essential aid to the troops in the field. She fearlessly accompanied her husband through the harsh winters at Valley Forge and other encampments. In a heartfelt letter to Henry, 
Lucy revealed her transformation, triggered by the necessity of managing his business affairs. She boldly requested that upon his return, he not assume the role of commander-in-chief of their home. A true pioneer of feminism, indeed. Despite enduring countless hardships, including the heartbreaking loss of 10 out of their 13 children in infancy, Lucy's unwavering devotion to her husband and the Patriot cause remained steadfast. She willingly sacrificed her family, wealth, and opulent lifestyle to bolster her husband's efforts in shaping the United States. Lucy's poignant letters to her beloved offer a poignant glimpse into the trials and sacrifices faced on the home front during the American Revolution. Their enduring tale stands as a testament to the countless sacrifices made by individuals during that pivotal era. It's undeniable that without Lucy and Henry, the United States would not be the beacon of freedom and independence it is today. 1. Sarah Livingston J. Sarah Livingston J., a shining star in the tapestry of early American society, emerged from the prestigious lineage of William Livingston, a Constitution-signing luminary. Her destiny intertwined with John Jay, another signatory, in matrimony. Together, they embarked on a journey across the Atlantic, where Sarah's influence blossomed. In France, she ingeniously embraced Benjamin Franklin's strategy, orchestrating the integration of Americans into the upper echelons of French society to nurture diplomatic ties. Within her captivating orbit, luminaries like Adrienne, the wife of Marquis de Lafayette, and Abigail Adams, among other American expatriates, found their place. Sarah's charisma and social finesse elevated her to a prominent status in French society, her mere presence once even captivating a theater audience. Sarah's significance transcended the European shores. She assumed the role of the First Lady of New York during her husband's gubernatorial tenure and later presided as the revered matriarch of the Supreme Court's social circle when John ascended to the position of Chief Justice in the United States. Fluent in the language of diplomacy, French, she was celebrated for her tact and finesse, earning her a pivotal role as a staunch supporter of George Washington's nascent presidential administration. In defiance of the prevailing legal norms of coverture, which tethered a woman's legal identity to her spouse, Sarah wielded significant influence in the formative years of the American government. Her indomitable spirit played a pivotal role in forging the Treaty of Alliance with France and the Jay Treaty with Great Britain. Without Sarah's diplomatic acumen and political acuity, the United States' early forays into international relations would have been fraught with turbulence and uncertainty. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more content. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends. We appreciate your support. Bye.